Oscar Blumner, Future Nostalgia. Selections from the Vera Blumner Cuba Collection, curated by Chad Surhall, the Homer and Dolly Hand Art Center, Stetson University in Deland, Florida, January to April 2023. The passage of time catches us by surprise. It reveals a lot about our society and progress and forces us to think about the future and what another 112 years might look like. Oscar Blumner, 1867 to 1938, was a modernist painter in the early 20th century. Though championed by photographer and gallerist Alfred Stieglitz, he sold very few paintings in his lifetime. When he died, he left his work to his daughter Vera, who donated much of it to the Hand Art Center in 2000. The works studied in this exhibition were mostly created in 1910 and 1911 in northern New Jersey and the Washington Heights area of Manhattan. The catalyst for this investigation came from the previous exhibition about the notes written on the back of Blumner's color sketches. On the backs of these plein air studies, Blumner reinterpreted colors of objects in nature as well as rearrangements of the composition. To investigate that further, I traveled to the locations described on the sketches to see if I could find the landmarks and landforms that Blumner observed. I wanted to see what had changed and what had stayed the same. When choosing a location to illustrate, Blumner looked for the blending of the urban and the rural, or the modern and the pre-modern. In that way, he was interested in the past and looking toward the future. Like many forward-thinking artists of the 20th century, Blumner wanted to capture modernity in all its forms. He came from an architectural background and was drawn to old buildings and church structures, which would have been between 50 and 150 years old in 1910, but he saw them as future structures that would stand the test of time. He often combined water, land, and industrial constructions. All the locations that he would sketch were no more than 10 or so miles from where he lived, reachable by train or ferry. Falls Return to Former Glory Last summer I was able to go through the entire Oscar Blumner collection in the Blumner Vault. There were postcards of scenic views in New England, there were several scraps of paper with notes written on the backs of them, and newspaper clippings about art and art-related things. After putting together this exhibition and going through the rest of the work to think of other ideas for future exhibitions, I found this newspaper clipping. The caption reads, Patterson showing the miniature Niagara in full flood. The lower picture was made by the same photographer in a dry period about 40 years ago. There is no date on this clipping, but my guess is it is from later in his life in the 1920s or 30s, which would mean the top picture is from the future of this colored sketch, and the bottom one is in the past. I can only speculate that Blumner saved this clipping for curators like myself to better understand his work. I was excited to find it because the title for this show I had produced during my travels belonged somewhere between these two photographs. Patterson, May 7th, 1911. Patterson and the Great Falls felt like a Blumner Mecca. Many of his paintings are of scenes in Patterson, New Jersey, and a lot of the town looks the same as it did a hundred years ago. Some of the architecture looks remarkably similar to buildings in the two places in which he grew up in Germany. Patterson Great Falls was the first place I looked up to see if it was still there and what it looked like currently. It started the idea that these places all still exist in some capacity. Patterson had a large silk mill industry that Blumner took interest in. Blumner composed several paintings of the company's buildings with a red and somber tone due to the mistreatment of workers who in 1913 went on a historical five-month strike. In the last 10 years, these buildings, built in the 1800s, have been converted into art spaces, event halls, lofts, and other commercial properties. On the Patterson Great Falls Historic Park website, it says that the footbridge over the falls is closed indefinitely, replacement pending. This will give this scene a new future for another 100 years. Hudson Riverside Drive, 
North, August 1910, 6 p.m. The colored sketch is of the Hudson River off Riverside Drive in August of 1910. We see in the far distance the purple palisades of New Jersey, which will be repeated in this exhibition. We see the Hudson River, which starts at a bluish purple, purple, then greenish blue, then blue. We then see rock forms and classic bloomer trees with a strong curvy trunk on the shoreline. Then we see yellow, red, and green grass and a purple road. Behind him would be the New York brownstone apartments, which are still there today. Riverside Drive is now a four-lane bumper-to-bumper road that runs along the Hudson in Lower Manhattan. In the sketch, it looks like a scenic country road. The area where Blumner was standing is now a playground in Washington Heights. Little Falls, May 15, 1915, 2 p.m. First Reformed Church of Little Falls, New Jersey, is featured in the distance of this not-quite-finished colored sketch drawn by Blumner in 1915. This part of the Passaic River now has a water treatment plant built over top of it. The trees are taller and structure is high, leaving only a portion of the steeple of the church which was built in 1840. The town is named after an area that has a small waterfall. At the foot of the falls, there is an old factory, bent trees, and many rock forms, all reminiscent of Blumner's later works. Pine Brook, September 5th, 1910, 6 p.m. In the center of Pine Brook, September 5, 1910, 6 p.m., is the Montville Reformed Church just outside of the township of Pine Brook, New Jersey, in Montville. The church was established in 1756. After 266 years, the church is now surrounded by the graves of former members. The church building in this sketch was built in 1854, but burnt down. The newer replica of the original church was built in 1938, which is what we see today. The hill behind the three buildings in Blumner's colored sketch isn't there. The area is slightly hilly, but not that hilly from any angle. This shoot was a warm and peaceful moment, with a light wind under the shade of a tree, surrounded by graves with flags due to it recently being the 4th of July. Edgewater, May 1911. The English Neighborhood Reformed Church in Ridgefield, New Jersey, established in 1793, is on Edgewater Avenue near the borough of Edgewater, but technically in Ridgefield today. The Continental Army's retreat from New York City came straight through this area led by George Washington during the Revolutionary War. During the Civil War, many church members were actively part of the Underground Railroad. What used to be a busy road running by this church, carrying goods to New York from New Jersey, is now a calm and quiet haven in the middle of the bustling city, due to a highway cutting through, making Edgewater a dead end. As you can see, there are several more graves around the church, when only a few can be seen in the colored sketch. The church's steeple in the colored sketch is not there. I couldn't find any older photographs of the church online to see what other configurations it had. Washington Heights, April 27, 1911. After searching vantage points on Google Maps, I concluded that Washington Heights West was drawn in the location that is now underneath the Washington Bridge. On April 27, 1911, there was no lighthouse or bridge, only lamps on poles. In 1921, due to the influx of water traffic and many accidents that had occurred on the rocky shore formerly called Jeffrey's Hook, they built the Little Red Lighthouse. It was useful for 10 years until they built the George Washington Bridge, and its lights were enough to guide the ship's way. New Yorkers fought to keep the Little Red Lighthouse as a beacon of the past. This spot is the end of Fort Washington Park. Hackensack, August 21st, 1910. If you look closely, There is a little bridge in the distance of the colored sketch entitled Hackensack. That led me to this vantage point. The five smokestacks had not been built yet, though Blumner would go on to use this structure in many of his later paintings. 
Hackensack is a dense and bustling city, but this spot couldn't be more peaceful. Hudson River, 153rd Street, December 20, 1911, at 9.30 a.m. This is where 153rd Street meets the Hudson River on Manhattan Island. In 1911, ferries would do most of the importing to New York from New Jersey, so there were docks and ports up and down the Hudson, where there is now only a park. And the park had many families having picnics with live music, games, and roller skating. Gutenberg, New Jersey, April 29, 1911, 11 a.m. I knew finding a good vantage point for this location would be difficult. Gutenberg seems like a relatively bustling city in 1911, and I figured there would be many more buildings standing in the way. In 2022, Gutenberg, New Jersey is the number one most densely populated city in the United States. The church in the distance in Curvy Road was all I had to go on. The rock formation in the background had been fabricated by Blumner because there's no such hill in Gutenberg. The church, which is difficult to see in the video, has an almost identical shape as the one in the colored sketch. Amazingly, the Freedom Tower is seen directly behind it on the other side of the Hudson on Manhattan Island. Hudson River West, June 26, 1910. This colored sketch is of the west side of the Hudson River, just in front of the cliffs of the Palisades in Alpine, New Jersey. Unless, of course, Hudson River West means Blumner was facing west, then we would be on the wrong side of the river. The reason I feel like this is a correct vantage point is that the Palisades are much higher than the hills in this colored sketch, and the two line up perfectly. Researching these locations was a fascinating scavenger hunt and a bonding experience in conversation between artist and curator. I began to see my surroundings through Blumner's eyes. Forced to be still and silent for two to five minutes while filming the location was the focus implemented in Blumner's sketches and the key to true observation. Spending months researching locations and then seeing them in real life felt surreal. Many times when I found the vantage point of a location, there would be a large rock. I thought, I bet Blumner sat on that rock. So I sat on that rock too. Spending time walking in his footsteps gave me a greater idea of the towns he lived in, the landscapes and structures he preferred, and the discipline of paying attention to one's surroundings. I hope this exhibition reflects that focus and helps one see the future and nostalgia in the mundane.